Welcome back. Okay, we've got a lot of little things to talk about here in our weigh-in segment, but we want to start out with uh, talking about slow food. Paula Ross is an advocate for slow food, expert on slow food. Li that's your lifestyle, slow food lifestyle. Uh, I try. I try, try, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> and Brittany Gibbons is here, of course, from, um, I used to say Barefoot Foodie, and I have to get that out of my hand. Brittany Gibbons .com, Brittany herself com. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we're going to learn about slow food from you and then kind of expand our discussion into right. some other things that are kind of happening in the food and, and eating world. So first of all, the, the basic question is, what is slow food? I've got one of the books here about what is slow food? Slow food's a way of living. It's a way of thinking. It's just a, a, a way of looking at everything uh, through a different lens and asking when you eat, when you drink, three things. Three really, really simple questions. Okay, what are those questions? Is it good? Uh-huh. Is it clean? Ooh. <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> the, the first thing that goes in my mind is ho-ho's. <laughs> those are good. And, but they're not clean. And is it fair? <laughs> is it fair? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, is it good is the, the fairly obvious one, right? I'm good at that one. That's You're, the only one I can get. How does it taste? Yeah. Is it good? How yeah. does it taste? Okay, yeah. so we, we got the is it good knocked. What's the next? Right, right. Is it clean? Well, in growing that food and in processing it and in bringing it to us, are we ruining the planet? Are, are we destroying we the environment? Uh -huh. So clean means, you know, we're, we're thinking about the effects of how this food is grown and how it gets to us and even what happens to what we throw away mm -hmm. uh, so that people in the future, so that our kids and our grandchildren also have the opportunity to enjoy good food. And then the third thing. The third thing, is it fair? Who's making this food? Who's growing it? Who's processing it? Who's selling it to us? And are they treated fairly? But in those second two questions you have a loaded amount of information oh, yes. those are three oh, simple yes. questions but the middle two are pretty <laughs> tough um so when it comes to slow i mean it's called slow food because of it, it's really the opposite of fast food it's called slow food because the movement began in italy in the late 1970s and it really was a reaction to an attempt to place a mcdonald's on a historic square in, in rome so slow food is in many ways the opposite of fast food. Okay, so um, I mean, and it is. I mean, that's. It's just the easiest way to describe. Um, do you think about where your food? I mean, I know you do the whole. Uh, you do the whole cow thing. I mean, you buy. I do. Which to me is, I think, pretty progressive. She mm -hmm. she's living out in where this is something that she can do. Right. I live in a more rural area, so mm -hmm. it's it's easier for me to do that. Um, but vegetables are really hard because we live in Ohio and. Right. We so I can't garden year round, so and the I do freeze some, but no. And mm -hmm. the perception too is that when you're um, eating organic, it's more expensive, or or you go and buy a kiwi and you think, okay, this is this is organic and it's good for me, and it also flew here on a plane for 40 million hours. Right, right, right. So how do you where when you're sourcing that part of it, you know, the clean part of it? What do you? Well, there are a couple what is of things. It for you? One, one really important thing is we live in Northwest Ohio where there's a big greenhouse industry. And in the past, this greenhouse industry has produced a lot of vegetables, uh, not year round, but certainly into an extended season. And it can again, especially tomatoes. We're, I mean, this area is known for great tasting tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And they, they can be grown before the season starts and after the season ends in greenhouses. And we are blessed with a, a, a greenhouse industry here. So where do you buy your tomatoes then? I mean, it's easy to say that we can do this, sure, but when sure. I go to the grocery store, there's the tomatoes, they're on sale or not, and I put them in my cart and what well, do you I do? I have a hierarchy. First, if I can grow it, I do. <laughs> Although I will it, say that okay. I had a few tomatoes ripen already this year, but the deer beat me to them. So right, that, that's tough. That is tough. <laughs> <laughs> but I shop year round at the farmer's market okay. in Toledo. And uh, for most of that year, there are tomatoes available. And I, I belong to a CSA that also provides me with tomatoes during the season and a little after. Explain that acronym. Okay, a CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that I have a uh, contract with a farmer and I pay at the beginning of the season for my share mm -hmm. of their farm's harvest throughout 19 weeks and every week I pick up my bag uh, or box of uh, fresh vegetables I also get eggs and I get fruit and so, that's the way the farmer is supported I mean that's that's the way he knows that he can you know survive th through the year essentially are there any right. CSAs near you that you've seen or um yeah, there are a lot of uh -huh. um, 
I live out in Fulton County and there's, right. there's a lot of agriculture there. Um, so yeah, there are. Um, but going into the winter months, I, I haven't been able to myself to find anything to extended. And I have three very small kids, so going too far <laughs> is just, I'm for it's ease. A, I mean, I'm, I'm a realist about it. Yeah. If, when I can do it, I do it. And, and when it becomes the point where I want to pull my hair out to get it, it, it becomes too hard. Right. So what do you do? What do you say when, I mean, like, so you're, you've got your hier hierarchy. When, you know, you also don't have small children at home. No, I don't have small children at home anymore. Uh, but I'm Which not, is a determiner, by the way. I mean, sure like, it is. The amount Absolutely of time that you is. can spend on all these things yeah. becomes, you know, you just choose. You pick your battles on what you you're going to do. do. But there, there's no reason to be rigid about it. I think okay. that anything you do, if, uh, if you currently are buying... Uh, tomatoes from halfway across the country in the summer when they're grown here, well probably you can switch that. You can right. buy something grown here. And maybe you can freeze a few things. And that, maybe you yeah. can you know, only eat tomatoes when tomatoes really taste good and sometimes in the middle of the winter they don't taste very good, which goes back to number one, it should taste good. So maybe there are times of the year when tomatoes don't really add much to our diet and we should skip them. So that was the question, do you can? Canning is becoming more popular. Um, you know, gardening is actually having experiencing a renaissance for all these things. Do you garden? Um, no, well, I, there's a farmer's market near me and so, I, for the first right. time ever, I froze. Uh -huh. last winter. Not nearly enough. It got me only a couple yeah. months. Yeah. I don't know. I can't measure things. Yeah. So, but it was really easy. You kind of just boil a little and then drain and freeze. And it was, it was, I was shocked how easy it was. And the vegetables were so good. Yeah, I'm afraid of it. So I guess I'm afraid of it. Yeah, I, I Googled it. I Googled it. Dr. Google. I said, Dr. Google. They're amazing. I mean, even with tomatoes, you can dry them and freeze tomatoes. They don't take up much space and they're delicious. So, um, then in, in this it's time this time of year it's easier this time much of year easier. it's much easier to much do much easier mm -hmm. and what's but so what's the benefit you know what's the benefit of of changing your how long have you practiced this lifestyle i guess gradually i think i've been changing over the last 10 years i've always uh had a garden uh grew up eating fresh food so it came kind of naturally but over the last six to ten years i think i've increased my awareness uh, partly because of slow food, mm -hmm. paying attention to what I'm eating, what I'm feeding my friends or my family, uh, and sometimes that just changes my behavior slowly without me deciding I'm not going to go to the supermarkets anymore, uh -huh. but I don't go there anymore. So you mostly shop where? I mostly shop either at uh, my local store, Shirlings. Mm -hmm. uh, this is after the market, okay? This is next in the hierarchy. Okay. Or I go to Fresh Market because they have a wide range of uh, or, uh, organic or sustainably grown product. But those are, again, convenient for me. I don't go mm -hmm. way out of my way to do that. Uh, right. I think that's like such a, a such a great discussion because it it's for so many of like that you see on TV it's all or nothing so many right. times and right. and it makes it intimidating especially for someone like me I'm like thinking the cost of that sounds astronomical the my ability to just physically do it with three small kids and toe sounds uh -huh. out of the question yeah. so I guess I just can't do it but these small changes like mm -hmm. small changes make yeah. a big difference and, and it's surprisingly ones. inexpensive to right. shop at a farmers market in the mm -hmm. summer right. what you're paying for your vegetables is significantly lower than what you're going to pay in the store right and people don't realize that. that's been no. true forever and our, our certainly our parents and our grandparents knew it if you buy what's in season it's inexpensive and it tastes good yeah it's very inexpensive to shop at a farmers market i love that okay well so um, the next question is, uh, there are some, this food rules you brought, this, we talked books la last week and this didn't make, this wasn't in it, but this has been recommended to me also a couple of different times. The, the favorite rule that I, I, I've read it three times this morning and still can't remember it. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Are you a vegetarian? No, I'm not a vegetarian. I uh, eat fish, I eat meat, I, I'm an omnivore. I'm an omnivore. Yes. What about the, is, what's that book? Omnivore's Dilemma. Yes, that's, uh, that was it's an eye dilemma. opener for me. Right. Uh, it's a dilemma for most of us, uh, but Michael Pollan works his way through uh, several different meals. That's how that book is organized, by meal. And again, it's an eye-opener for me and has been for many, many people. Okay, so if we were going to um, start thinking of a slow foods, I mean, do you lean into it a little bit at a time? You know, Absolutely. like you were saying, just a, just, just try a little bit. Just try just here try. for the next mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to think about it. This or just way. a meal. Just a meal. Just a meal. Say, okay, in this meal, let's think about what I'm putting on the plate, mm -hmm. and is it good? Right. What did it mean for the environment? How it was produced? How it got to me? And is it fair? Do I know anything about the people that grew that food and if they're 
uh, if they're able to live the kind of life I want to live. It, do you do that with your, you were talking about then with meats. That, the meat, meats have gotten a lot of attention the last couple of months because of the green, uh, pink slime, green slime, which would also seem bad if there's green slime, I don't know. <laughs> that's on Nickelodeon, but. <laughs> I hope that's not in my food. Sometimes. <laughs> that's the back of your food. I know. I mean, it's in my food, just not on purpose. So how do you source your meat? You do the best thing. You do the most amazing, you, you've seen right. the animal, you do like the thing. You, yep. I see the animal and that's it. You're and, that. <laughs> and it's actually um, it was sort of the morbid discussion you have with your kids of like this is where meat comes from and, <laughs> right. and I always like have this weird saying and it's 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 absolutely dark and morbid but I'm always like is this worth it like that makes I want them to eat all the food on their plate because mm -hmm. an animal died and, uh -huh. and it's we have this great food from it and I want them to always finish it I'm like well was that worth it was it worth it for the animal for you to not eat your hamburger today <laughs> and I they look at me and they want to cry but best. I'm like this is effective for me <laughs> it works. and, well, and you, it sounds you, creepy but that's right and you can buy uh, you can buy an animal that mm -hmm. had one bad day in its life right Only yeah Right. And you know, that somehow that the makes a difference. Day. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that be the day before you got the animal. It was the bad day. So. Welcome to our family. Get in a pan. <laughs> but then you know what that animal ate. And exactly. You you're eating yes. what that animal ate. And, you know, I choose to buy grass-fed beef. You do, grass-fed. That's yeah. the thing. My kids actually have, like, field trips to the farm that we buy mm -hmm. our meat from. And it's, it's a little, right. well, you know. That's way good. That's adorable. <laughs> That's right. So Ben Gill works. And that may mean they eat or you eat less meat. True. Oh, no. <laughs> it didn't pan out that way, but for others it might. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Well, okay, so um, then move on to one more thing we wanted to talk about this Disney. The Disney has decided that you saw just before yeah, we just started. Yeah, just talking about kids and eating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Disney decided that they're going to pull all their non-healthy Mm -hmm. food advertising from their stations and it's going to actually going to reflect through ABC right as well which is interesting because um, the thing is you bring food into your house based on their desires a lot of the times the marketing for food marketing for little kids is more effective than any other marketing I don't buy fruit out for there myself. I mean, right yeah, I and like, they'll beg you they'll lay down yeah. on the floor in the grocery store for what they've seen and those advertisements determine what we think is good right absolutely so yeah. I think this is probably a good thing because I think so yes, too. It, when they toys are associated, they put out their own like Disney approved right. healthy food, so it's not like a completely selfless act. No, I'm sure they're going to market no. wonderfully yeah. Mickey healthy food, right? But yeah, and I know a lot of people are upset because it seems like another reach in this uh -huh. sort of like nanny state sort of mm -hmm. term that they keep throwing around. Um, and the parents should be able to make their own decisions. But I think a lot of times, especially when economics come in play, those decisions aren't. Mm -hmm. easy for parents to make so well and to me when you connect things that shouldn't like food and toys or food and an entertainment product or food you know what I mean it's like it's very uh, that's where it gets muddy for families like you know I want to go to this place because they've got the Simba that's how old my kids are but Simba <laughs> is in the Happy Meal so I'm going there right you know what I mean and you, there's just another layer but I, I'm gonna give one bit of advice here um, that works if you have small children you need to let them know you will never buy anything in the <laughs> checkout aisle. Nothing mm -hmm. in the checkout aisle is something going in your cart. It's going to cause problems for the first, you know, 75 million times. <laughs> Honestly, that has been the savior of every grocery trip I ever had when they were yeah. younger. Because nothing in that aisle is good for you. Now, if you want to buy an Inquirer, though, that's fine. Between <laughs> you and me, that's totally Well, fine. there's no calories in that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we are going to take a break, and when we come back, Paula is going to actually show us how to uh, cook what she does, the slow food movement um, actually in practice in our kitchen. Stay with us. <laughs> 